From repatriating the Almagiris to calls of scrapping the system as the Almagiris system had lived its course, and the Seven African Action Congress, that's the African Action Congress, claims the school feeding program is a scam. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The People's Democratic Party has accused President Mohamed Buhari and the All Progressives Congress of betraying al Majeri and Nigeria's poor and vulnerable after using them to grab power in 2015. The National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Mr. Kala Olobodion, said this while noting that the All Progressives Congress and its regime had continued to show their true colors, especially as manifested in the neglect and dehumanizing treatment that meted out to poor and vulnerable Nigerians since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. And joining us to have a conversation around this is Mr. Kola Olobodio himself, the National Publicity Secretary of the PDP via Skype. And I have with me live in the studio, a public affairs commentator, Babajide Benson. Thank you, Babajide, for joining us on the show tonight. Thank you for having me. Mr. Kola, thank you for joining us. And how are you doing this evening, sir? Thank you very much. Good evening. How is Lagos? Lagos is great. And how is Abuja? Abuja is OK. We just had the rain. It's good. I mean, now let's get let's get to it this evening. Your your statement, a whole lot to but about this evening about the statement you made recently. Now, in your statement in Abuja on Monday, 11 May 2020, to be precise, you said that President Mahmoud Buhari and all Progressive Congress have betrayed the Almajure and Nigeria's poor and vulnerable after using them to grab power in 2015. Now, this seems pretty much a very heavy allegation. And how exactly do you mean by what you said? Well, we don't consider it a heavy allegation in the People's Democratic Party. When we brought out, when we came out with that statement, we were addressing reality. We were addressing the real-time situation as it's happening in Nigeria. The Almajiris, the Dram Trodin, the people that President Muhammad Buhari called the Talakawas, who he believes are his supporters and associates, have been abandoned. All the, all the living conditions that were improved upon by the previous government. For instance, housing policy, the e wallets for the farmers, the mortgage system, the Almagri educational system. Where are they under this government in the last five years? Where are they? And to make issues worse, the Almagri have been deported under the guise of being reunited with their families. The ordinary people almost went berserk on the streets of Lagos, Abuja, and everywhere because of a lockdown in which the federal government, led by President Muhammad Buhari, did not make any arrangement for palliatives. And as we speak, what has the government and the APC as a party done in the interest of the ordinary people? to suggest that the ordinary Nigerians have not been abandoned after using them to grab power in 2015. Now, Mr. Olubo, a, a few people will argue with you that the, the Almagere system is not, is not new to just the APC government. It was even there when the PDP was in government for over 16 years. And so it, it, if the system is, uh, pre, pre, precedes the APC and also their policy, what exactly is the point you're trying to derive and make with this? What we are saying is this. What is the policy direction of the APC government as it affects the Almagiris and the ordinary Nigerians? We should not situate this issue. We should not locate it just within the context of the Almagiris. Just as we have the Almagiris in the north, we also have the downtrodden people who labor on a daily basis in the south to make ends meet. So the question we are saying is this. When President Mohamed Buhari wanted power in 2015, he rallied these ordinary people and said that he symbolizes their interest and that he was coming to government to work in their interest. Some people even believe he was going to come and distribute free houses for them. Some believe that they were being taken to El Dorado, not knowing that they were going nowhere and they were going to be abandoned by the APC and this government. And when you talk about what policy the People's Democratic Party implement while, it, while the party was in government? I want to remind you that under President Goodluck Jonathan, no fewer than 157 Almagiri schools 
were built under the PDP administration. And you will also recall that under uh, uh, President Richard Compassion, that there is a policy towards the Almagiri and towards the ordinary people. The question we are asking is this. The APC should point to one project in its five years that it has conceptualized in the interest of the ordinary people. It's not enough to say that, oh, what did PDP do? PDP built schools for Almagiris, specifically for Almagiris. PDP created and built universities. PDP had innovations in our lifestyle. Like I earlier said, if you look at the housing policy under the People's Democratic Party and several other programs implemented under PDP, the question is this. What has the APC government implemented in the last five years to Obviously, demonstrate? Okay, not, we're going to come to you in a bit. Let me, let me, let me take some reaction from our live guests in the, in the studio. But Majid Benson, you want to react to a few things um, Mr. Kala Lobodi has said, and also um, we'll go into all the questions with, with him later on. Okay, well, I'm tempted to agree with him on some of the things that he said. Um, when President Jonathan started the Amajiri schooling system, it was about seven years ago, 2013. If, um, so if um, that thing would have, was allowed to function, at least one set of students, pupils, would have gone through the system. That's the basic education. Um, 6394, I think 694? Sorry, 934 is what we have now. So well, at least at least some people would have gone from primary one to primary six, and by now they'll be in, um, they'll be getting into secondary school. And this was one of the things that the immediate the deposed Emir of Kano talked about time and again. He yes. was calling his own people to account. Don't forget that Kano has the largest number of the out of as a, a, a UNICEF reports of last year, end of last year, said that Kano State had about three million of the nine million out of school children, children in northern Nigeria. And that's something I think we should worry about. And if there's anybody who should have advanced the Amajiri schooling system, it should have been President Buhari because he's a northerner, he's right next to Kano State. And this should have been a good time for the Amajiri school system to flourish. Yeah, but the Amadure system, the Amadure situation precedes um, the, the, the APC I, I and even agree. also the PDP. Now, yeah. it's, 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 it's an issue of legislation, what should be done and what is rightly contained in our constitution. Now, Mr. Kola, you also did say that the APC and its government have succeeded in wrecking the lives of ordinary Nigerians, stolen their common patrimony and rendered many homeless, turned their joy into sadness, hope into hopelessness, fortune into abject poverty, and reneged on all their enticing promises, swindled and abandoned our citizens to a life of misery. Are you saying that Nigerians didn't experience the above mentioned, any of the above mentioned during the PDP administration? If you look at, if you take a trajectory, if you take a trajectory of the Nigerian economy and the political system since 1999 to date, we have never had it as terribly awful as we have witnessed under the APC government. And it is because they just had no policy direction. You recall, under the PDP government, the classroom teachers were joining cooperatives and were getting money to fund such cooperative societies. They were building houses, they were buying cars. And you take a trajectory of what has happened in the last five years, whether it is possible for any teacher to live that kind of life today. If you take the ordinary Nigerians out there who labor, like I said earlier on, day in, day out, to eat a living, and ask them whether under the People's Democratic Party it was bad or is as terrible as it is today, you will get your response. And if you look at the fact that under the People's Democratic Party government, life was more comfortable. Take an instance, the school feeding, which this government claimed to be doing. In the last five years, the incentive, special incentive program, SIP, which this government claimed to have done for some parts of its first time up to the last election in February 2019. The wife of Mr. President, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, came out publicly and it was, she was reported that the whole process was a sham, that there's no way that the poor of the poorest 
and be drawing benefits. And even if you take the palliative, the very recent palliative that the federal government claimed to have implemented. Now, as everywhere we live in Nigeria, few meters away from wherever we live, there must definitely be a group of people who are not doing economically as much as we do. Now, you ask them whether they have drawn benefits from this government. And to even make the worst form, the, the greatest laughing stock of what this government has turned Nigerians to. Who people who were in school before the coronavirus disease, who were not fed in school, the government came out that they will go around the houses in Nigeria and feed pupils. Now, how do you describe that? These people came into government. They beguiled the people. They lied to Nigerians. They told them that they were going to take them to El Dorado. They have abandoned them in the middle of nowhere. All right, Mr. Kola, we'll it. come to you in a bit. Now, um, Babajide Benson, you, you did hear Mr. Kola. I was saying, rightly, I mean, Nigerians didn't have it this tough during the PDP administration. Now, it's, it's always been the, the carrot and stick approach. Um, yes, I mean, Nigerians didn't have it this tough, but was it completely what it should be? The systems in place, how, how much? Because uh, what, we're seeing, what we're seeing right now is, is an abysmal poor performance of leadership from, from previous governments and culminating into the present administration of President Mahmoud Buhari. I mean, doesn't the PDP take any blame in all of this, given the fact that they were in power 16 years before now? Okay, so I'm one of those who say that um, a lot of people in the APC are, are what do you call it, alumni of the PDP. Yes. Um, if you, about, about nine of the governors in the APC today are PDP alumni. So the PDP cannot absolve itself of the blame. Mm. But then I think the point that um, Holok Bodinho is trying to make is that this government came in and promised change. <coughs> so we're starting, we're supposed to have been starting on a clean state. Um, you can't absolve past government. So it's, we've, we've gone progressively bad. Um, I think what the, what the current government has just done is to worsen a bad situation. We've gone progressively bad, he said. Mr. Kola, I do recall that the PDP administration took the initiative towards solving the Almajire problem during his administration. What exactly would you say went wrong with that? You were asking what was wrong with the policy of Almajire. What went wrong with it? I recall the PDP administration took an initiative towards solving the Almajire problem. What went wrong with all that policy that was taken by the PDP? Well, the well, PDP was... Um, uh, PDP lost the 2015 election, and the APC, with its messianic uh, uh, falsehood and campaign and propaganda, promised the people that they should abandon the schools that were built by the PDP government and come to support them. And they have been supported into office. And the question remains, what is the policy direction of Buhari's administration under the All Progressive Congress towards the Almajiri and the downtrodden Nigerians. That's remain, that remains the question. I have told you that under the People's Democratic Party, no fewer than 157 schools were built for the Almajiri. If the APC government had added one block of classroom to that 157 blocks of classroom, they should challenge the PDP to it and say that in so 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 and so village, they built a block of classroom as Almajiri school. And the question where the issue that we are raising is that APC promised Nigerians millions of jobs. They even said that every month they will be paying Nigerians social security for. Where are these promises? By May 29, it will have been five years of APC government in Nigeria. Even if you are planning to do something and you have spent five years, when the people that you make promises to begin to see the effect of those plans, Nigerians are not seeing any effect of any plan anywhere. And Nigerians have come to realize that this administration and its political party that brought it into office has absolutely nothing to offer Nigerians.
Now, um, Majid Benz, you want to react to, to that quickly. Now, the, the Amadjuri saga has been something that has been with us here. What, what do you think is basically the fear right now? Even the House of Rep is moving forward. Uh, firstly, they, they say there should be a repatriation. Now, they, they're, they're saying there shouldn't be any repatriation of Amadjuri. What, what is the concern? What is the biggest fear in all of this right now? Their security. That's the, that's the greatest fear. They're not concerned about the plight of those children. They're, compli they're, they're, they're concerned about their own plight because, I mean, if those children were to unleash, I mean, they're, 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 they can be used as cannon folders. If anybody finds them, if anybody wants to take advantage of the situation and make the country, uh, set the country on fire, those children can be easily used to, to foment trouble. So it's not so much about the plight of the children, the, the lawmakers, the political elite in northern Nigeria, and indeed many other parts of Nigeria are concerned about their own security. Don't forget that COVID has put all of us on the same level. You can't go anywhere. So now they begin to get concerned about that. I mean, I cannot understand why you'll be deporting people from one state in Nigeria to the other. It violates the constitution of Nigeria. I mean, Sakola, uh, we're going to let you go in a bit, but what's your thought on the repatriation of these child beggars? And does this go against our, the constitution in any ways? I need, your, I need your quick reaction to this. Yes, it is truly strange that, 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 that the government will wake up just suddenly and will begin to deport young men and girls around the country from their living, from the state where they live, their state of residence, and say so they are taking them to their home state. To do what? What is the educational facility provided in the home states where they are being taken to? How prepared is the government in the home states where they are being taken to? And you even discover, because it is a planless process, some of the states where they are being taken to are already rejecting them. So at the end of the day, the, the, young, the young boys and girls are at the mercy of the way, or, 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 or the firmament, of the weather. And it's unfortunate, very, very unfortunate that Nigeria can reduce to its own citizens, the supposed leaders of tomorrow, to the situation in which they have reduced these young boys and girls. I'm it's saying, unfortunate. Well, I'm let you go. What, what, what's your recommendation? I mean, given you're an official opposition of the ruling party right now, what is your recommendation and what is pertinent for us as a nation at this point in time? The federal, gov the federal government should sit down and design a policy that will accommodate these young boys and girls. As we speak today, just like they have no plan for the nation, the country, they have no plan for anybody, they have no plan for the nation, they also have no plans for the future of our nation. Otherwise, even Mr. President, when they went around the world and they neglect their youth as people who are lazy, and who look for bites, whatever they are. So it's unfortunate. Now, now finally, the administration of good luck, Abella Jonathan, came up with the Almagery Model School to cater for proper upbringing of these kids. What states are these schools and whose responsibility is it to revive the training programs? Mr. Lobodiyam, before we let you go. Well, 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 that's why, I, that's why I, our party has consistently asked the question, what is the policy direction of the APC and its administration, as it concerns the Almagiri, you have also confirmed that under President Goodluck Jonathan, which was a PDP government, no fewer than 157 schools were built and equipped to take charge of the education of these children, of these young boys and girls. What has happened to them, to these schools? What is the policy direction? What has the government of APC, and APC as a party, what have they done to improve on what was handed over to them? It is cheap talk to just come around and say that, oh, 16 years, 16 years, 16 years. In six years, what have you done to improve on what was handed over to you in 16 years? National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Carl Lobodino, thank you for joining us on Plus Politics and for your contribution on the show. Thank you very much. Number one, J.D. Benson, you did say while you were talking earlier, in just, in, just, in just a quick a moment, if you will, um, we need to go to the next segment right now. I mean, you did say it's for their own concern yeah. and not necessary for the, for the polity. Yeah. How do we begin to correct these ills? Yeah, well, um, thankfully, the president of the Senate, um, um, Ahmed Lawan, yes. had said that it was issued, it's time that the Amarjiri school system be revisited. And I hope that they will put action to that. If, if that happens, 
it's a, it's a step in the right direction, slow as it may be. And then you had asked them, Mr. Oluk, with your question, uh, whose responsibility is yes. it to get the systems working again? It's the Universal Basic Education Commission, commission because that's the agency responsible for primary, yeah, yeah. primary education across the country. Public Affairs <laughs> Committee to Babajide Benson, thank you for your time on the thank segment, you and you're still with us on the next. And thank you for staying with us. In our next discussion, the opposition party tells us what they think as regards the President Buhari's response strategy to handling of COVID-19. We'll be right back. <laughs>